What's up everyone, Mandy here from On The Grow, and today I'm gonna to show you how we like to grow Swiss chard microgreens from seed to harvest. All right, so we are inside of our grow space today and I'm going to show you how we like to grow Swiss chard microgreens and how we've been getting great results doing it this way. So if you come a little closer, I can go over the supplies you're going to need. First, you're going to need your seeds. For us, we got ours from Tree Leaf Market and we have the Ruby Red Organic Variety. Next, you're gonna need a way to measure out your seed. And lastly, you're going to need your trays. We're gonna start with our bottom tray. Our bottom tray is going to be used for whenever we start bottom watering. And for this one, you want one that has absolutely no holes in it so that way your water doesn't get everywhere. Next, you're going to need a tray that has some form of holes in it. The reason why you want the slits in it or some form of holes is so that whenever you put this tray on top of your bottom watering tray, it can absorb the water that is going to be housed in there. Next, you're going to need a top tray. So this tray will be used as not only your tray that you're going to hold weight on top of, but later on you will be flipping this to make it into blackout. But that is it for now on all this. So now we're going to move on to the actual seed measuring. So I'm going to turn on my scale. All right. And for this, we are going to use 25 grams of seed. And earlier I went ahead and pre-measured this with tablespoons. And I know that it takes about three tablespoons to equal 25 grams. Just a tiny bit more. So now that I have measured my seed, I'm actually going to set this aside and we are going to move on to the cocoa coir. So what we're going to do now is we're going to fill the tray part way, but not all of the way with cocoa coir. The reason being is after we fill this part way and we see the tray, we're going to put another layer <laughs> of cocoa coir on top of the seed. So for now, you just wanna slightly fill your tray Try to get as even as you can. Uh, I think that's pretty good. All right, so we are back over at the table and what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to put my bottom tray underneath this just to keep things a little less messy over here. So as you can tell over here, by looking at the sides of my tray, I have not filled this up all the way and you don't wanna do that yet because now we are going to seed this and then after we seed it, we're gonna go back over to the cocoa coir and we're gonna put another layer of cocoa on top of that. So for now, let's go ahead and start seeding this. So let's see if I can do a quicker job at seeding <laughs> this time. So, so we do not soak our Swiss chard seeds. Uh, we've done a few tests, like little tests <laughs> with uh, soaking times with them. And we found that we actually get better results whenever we do not soak them. So we do not do that anymore. So the goal here is you just wanna to try to get this as even as possible. So that way you don't have big clusters of seed everywhere. Some these little areas. All right, so that is pretty good. All right, so as you can see here, I've tried to keep the seed as even as I could across the whole medium. And what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to get another scoop of the cocoa coir. And we're going to put a layer of that up over all the seed. Try to get some of these clumps taken out too. This is actually a good amount. So just try to get it all covered and also try to make it as even as you possibly can. And then the next step is you want to firmly 
push down the cocoa core. I give it a pretty decent push. The reason why we are putting the cocoa core on top and why I am pushing it down is so that way those hard shells will come off. Because if you don't get those off, you're not gonna be able to really eat your Swiss chard because the seed hulls are super hard. We got that all layered down. What I'm gonna do next is I'm going to take this over to the sink. The reason why we're taking it over to our sink is because in our grow space, we have a water line hooked up to this, which allows me to use the mist setting. So I like to use that for this. So what you're going to do now is you're going to actually water this pretty heavy. Um, what I've noticed personally is if you keep this really damp, for the first few days of growing Swiss chard, it actually has a higher likelihood of it getting off all of the seed hulls. So we're gonna give this a really good water. And what I'll do too is go over each day, each step, and show you when you're gonna stop watering it so heavy, because at one point you will not water it like this. It's just for the beginning stage, it works really well. All right, so I think that is pretty good. So I'm actually going to show you that even though I watered it really heavy, it's not so heavy that it is dripping through the bottom of the tray. You don't want it to be oversaturated because that's just going to cause germination issues, but you do want this crop to be very saturated. So what we're going to do now is we're going to actually take it over to our table real quick. Now we're going to take our top tray place that on top of it. And for this one, I'm going to use a 15 pound paver just because I found that it has been working really well. Um, you don't have to use a weight, I don't believe, but I just, I've been preferring this so far. I am, however, running some tests behind me over here to see if I can get better results without the weight, which we will definitely keep you guys updated on that. But for now, this way has been working perfectly. So now, I'm going to move this over to our shelf and I will give you guys some more updates tomorrow. So it is day two of our Swiss chard grow. So what we're going to do today is we are going to pull this off the shelf. I'm gonna sit it on our table real quick. I'm gonna remove my brick. Then I'm going to remove my top tray. <clears throat> now let's just take a look at it real quick. It's still looking really moist, that's really good. Nothing poking through just yet. So now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take it over to our sink and I'm gonna use our sprayer on the mist setting and I'm gonna give this another really good spray so that way I can continue to keep this very moist. Now that looks really good. So now we're gonna go back over to my table and then got a little wrapped up on the cord. And then we're going to put this back on top, put our brick back on top. And we're going to move this back over to the shelf. So now I'm going to come back out later tonight and do that exact same process and see if it still needs a good amount of water. Other than that, I will see you tomorrow. What's up everyone? It is day three of the Swiss chard grow. So we are going to pull this off of the shelf, bring it over to our table. I'm going to remove this brick and set it down on the ground for now. And I'm going to remove this top tray. We're just going to take a peek at this real quick. So currently right now, I'm not seeing anything poking up on the top. I'm gonna to take a look at the bottom and see what's going on down there. And still no roots down here, but we are getting closer to where that's gonna start happening. It's only day two. I believe it starts happening around day four. So pretty soon we're gonna to get to the exciting stuff. But for now, I'm gonna take this over to our sink and we're going to add water to it. So I have this set on the mist setting and I'm going to give this another really pretty, not really heavy, but a really good watering because I'm trying to soften the shells of the seeds. Okay. That's pretty good. 
so now we're gonna take this back over to the table. And what we're gonna do next is we're gonna put the brick back on and the top tray. So, got that on and our brick. And now we're going to put this back on the shelf so it can continue to germinate. And what we'll do is later tonight, I'm gonna to come back out, I'm gonna do that same process, make sure everything's still looking good and wet. And that's it for today. I will see you tomorrow. All right, it is day four of our Swiss chart grow. So we're going to pull this off of the shelf. I'm gonna move it over to this table and take off the weight. Oh, got stuck. <laughs> okay. And now I'm going to take off this tray, move that out of my way. And as I can see right now is I'm starting to get a bunch of them coming up, which that's awesome. And let's check underneath and see how we're looking. And we're getting some roots down there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this over to the sink and we're going to get it watered. Turn it on. Make sure it's on the right setting because I don't want to flood it. Okay, and we're just gonna give this not as heavy as the water as we've been giving it, but we're still gonna give it a good water. Okay, and now we're gonna actually add just a little bit underneath here so the roots don't dry out because you don't want those to start browning. And now we're gonna take it back over here. And today what we're going to do is we will not be putting the 15 pounds on there. We're actually gonna just do this plain tray so that way we don't have any issues with the seeds and the plants getting lodged because what will happen is if you put weight on for too long, they will stay bent or they'll become like super wiggly and we want them to come up as straight as we can get them. So for now, we're just gonna do this as the weight and we're going to put this back on the shelf. And tonight I will come back out, I will check all the watering again and if it needs a little bit more misting at the bottom, I will give it some, but it really shouldn't need that yet. But other than that, that is it for today. It is day five of our Swiss chard microgreens grow. So let's go ahead and pull this off of the shelf. As you can tell right away, the microgreens are actually starting to peek through. So let's take a look at what's going on down here. So right away, I can see that the microgreens are pushing up the cocoa coir, which is creating kind of a shelf of uh, cocoa coir over the microgreens. So usually what you wanna do if that starts to happen is to knock that off or find a way to push it down carefully or just some way of getting that out of your way. But for today, because I feel like it, it's just not high enough yet, I'm going to leave that and we'll check on it tomorrow and see if I need to do that. But for now, let's go ahead and take a peek of what's going on underneath. So we are getting a lot of roots right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and spray that a little bit so that way we can keep them white and pretty. And we are also going to spray the top of this and give it a light misting. Tomorrow we'll probably end up adding the actual nutrient to this. But for today, we are just gonna do this because we are not putting it into the light just yet. So what I'm gonna do today is instead of the tray sitting on top like this, I'm going to flip it and put it into blackout. We will just be doing this blackout for a single day and tomorrow we should hopefully see that cocoa coir pushed up a lot more. We can get that out of our way and get to growing this crop. So later tonight, I'm going to come back out and I'm gonna double check everything and make sure it's not needing any more water. And if it does need more water, I'm gonna give it a little bit more, but I will see you tomorrow. So it is day six of our Swiss chard grow. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna pull this off the shelf and take a look at it. So right away, I can already see that Swiss chard is beginning to poke through this, which means it is definitely time for this to come out of blackout. So you can tell whenever you wanna take it out of blackout by the height of the plant. And right now I know that this is at a good height. If I let it stretch any longer, it is going to become too long and I don't want this to be a super lanky product. So this is a good point to finally remove this. But for now, let's go ahead and take a look at this. So I am noticing some areas where the coca core has gotten a little stuck together 
and it looks like the plants are having a hard time poking through. So I want to try to kind of loosen that just a little bit. Doesn't have to be perfect, but just loosen it a tiny bit so that way the plants can break through that. And it should be good and that will catch up. You can also do things like remove the coca core from it, but I just don't want to do that right here because it is in the center of the tray. And I'm worried that if I were to try to scoop all that off, it might pull out the plants. So instead, I just want to try to get this where they can make it through. And that also tells me that next time, probably do a slightly less amount of coca core on top because this might have been a little bit too much of a heavy layer. So other than that, it is looking perfect. What I'm going to do now is I have my ocean solution water already measured out and I have this at the half cup range. So what I'm going to do is lift this up and if I can get them apart, we are going to bottom water it. Ooh, and our roots are looking really nice. You can even see some red color in them. Super pretty. So right away you can tell, I didn't fill this up a whole lot. I just gave it enough water so that way the roots don't start to dry out because I know the rest of this tray right now is wet enough. So that's perfect for today. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually going to introduce this to light now, which means we're gonna start to see that true color come through. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come out tonight, double check that soil that's on top of these, see if I need to fix it at all anymore. And I'm going to give it another half cup of water, but I will see you tomorrow. It is day seven of our Swiss chard grow. So we're gonna pull it off the shelf and take a look at it. So, so far, everything is looking really good. I did get one area right here that I'm assuming that the cocoa core just kind of kept it at a lower germination rate right there, but everything is starting to push up and this should catch up to the rest of the tray and this is gonna look great at the end. So first, let's take a peek at these roots. And everything is looking very happy. And what we're going to do now is I already pre-measured out two thirds cup of the ocean solution water and we are going to bottom water it. And that is it. One thing I do want to take a note of is look how there is no seed holes on this, which is really awesome because Swiss chard has such a hard seed that if you were to bite into it, it would really hurt your teeth. So that is the main goal is to make sure there's no seed holes on this crop. But for now, we're gonna put this on the shelf and tonight I'm going to come back out, do that exact same process, and I will see you tomorrow. It is day eight of our Swiss chard grow, so we're going to pull it off the shelf and take a peek at it. So, so far everything's looking really good. This middle section that I had a little bit of a weird uh, germination with is now beginning to catch up with the rest of the tray, and it should be caught up fully by the end of this. But what I'm noticing right away is that my coca core medium is still very moist. So it tells me that I don't need to add a ton of water today. So I'm actually going to stick to adding a two third cup. And this is still the ocean solution water mixture. So let's go ahead and get this bottom watered. Everything's looking really good and happy underneath there, which is awesome. And now all we have left to do is we're going to stick this back on our shelf. And later tonight, I'm gonna come back out, double check it, I'm still going to be adding not so much water because it is very wet and I guarantee later tonight is still going to be pretty wet, but I'll see you tomorrow. It is day nine of our Swiss chard grow. So I'm going to pull this off the shelf so we can take a peek at it. So right away, I can already tell that I'm really not seeing any seed hole still. There's like one or two, but still there's not much on this at all. And our height that we are having an issue with in the middle is actually beginning to catch up to the rest of the tray. So that is really good news. And looking at the medium, it's still fairly damp, but not super damp. So what I'm going to do is I'm only gonna give it two thirds cup of our nutrient solution. And now I'm just gonna close that, let it soak it up. And while it soaks it up, it's going to sit on the shelf. So tonight I'm gonna to come back out, give it another two thirds cup of water and check everything, but I will see you tomorrow. It is day 10 over Swiss chard grow. So I'm going to pull this off of the shelf and take a peek at it. Everything is looking really awesome. That middle part is definitely catching up to the rest of the tray now. And I'm not seeing any seed holes. Uh, one trick I will tell you is if you do see seed holes on this crop, I would advise you to try to get those off because they are so hard that if you bite into that, it's gonna hurt your teeth really bad. But that's besides the point. Our medium is looking 
kind of damp. It's in the in between stage right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a half a cup of water. And this is still our ocean solution mixture. Let me try to get this down to the half cup. Okay, so we're going to give it three fourths. It's just over that. Okay, and now we're going to let that soak that up. And we're going to put it back on the shelf. And later tonight, I'm going to come back out, give it that same amount of water and put it back on the shelf again. So I'll see you tomorrow. It is day 11 of our Swiss chard grow. So let's pull it off the shelf and take a peek at it. So everything is actually looking super awesome. And we're about two days out from harvest day. And as you can see, that middle section has now caught up with the rest of the tray and we're getting pretty even growth across the whole thing. And we're not seeing any seed holes, which is the main goal here. And let's check at our medium. So our medium is slightly damp. It's not too wet. So we're only gonna give it probably about two thirds cup again today. And our roots are still looking good. So let's go ahead and get this watered. All right. And this is still our ocean solution water mixture. Do a little bit less. All right, perfect. So now let's get this bottom watered. And I'm just gonna kind of tilt it a little bit to make sure all sides of it get enough water. Since right now our grow space is kind of tilted, we need to fix that. All right, perfect. So I'm gonna put this on the shelf now. And later tonight, I'm gonna to come back out again. I'm gonna double check it and I'm gonna give another two thirds cup of water and I'll see you tomorrow. Today is day 12 of our Swiss chard grow. So let's go ahead and pull it off the shelf and take a peek at it. So everything is looking perfect on this grow. I'm so excited about this because I've been missing Swiss chard. It's become one of my favorite microgreens to eat. So I'm very much looking forward to this. So we are about a day away from the harvest day on this. And it looks like our medium only needs a little bit of water today. So we're going to continue giving it about two thirds one, or one cup of water. So let's just take a peek real fast. Yeah, it's already drinking up everything. So let's go ahead and get some of our water mixture. I think today, since it is so dry underneath, I'm going to give it one cup. The good thing about Swiss chard is it doesn't really take a lot of water. Okay. I'm just going to kind of tilt it. That way we can make sure all the medium gets watered. Okay, and now I'm going to set this on my shelf. Later tonight, I'm going to come back out. I'm probably going to give it another cup of water and I will see you tomorrow. Today is day 13 of our Swiss chard grow and it is harvest day. These are looking beautiful. So I want to check it real quick and see if I see any seed holes at all because Swiss chard does have such a hard seed that you just really don't want to chew it. It will really hurt your teeth. Um, and we're looking pretty good here. I would just suggest if you do find any seed holes in yours, try to pick those out before you give them to customers. No one wants to bite on that. So what we're going to do now is we are going to turn on our scale. I'm using a scale because I want to take the weight on this because we like to collect the data. So what you're going to need is a scale and some form of bowl to harvest into. And I'm going to make sure it's on the correct setting and we are on our gram setting. So the next thing you're going to need is obviously a knife. So be very careful. You want your knife to be very sharp. So that way, whenever you go to harvest, it just glides right through. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to gently grab this. You don't want to grab it super hard, but you don't want to make it where it's so loose that you just kind of let go. And we're just going to glide through. So Swiss chard cuts extremely easily. Like it just, it takes no pressure at all. <laughs> and you really want to try to harvest like higher up or you're going to get dirt on your knife and dirt in your product. And it can be a little bit challenging with Swiss chard. So just do your best to not harvest too low, but not too high. Glide right through this. And look how beautiful this is. You see that gorgeous stem color. 
and that red you can see on the leaves too so pretty so what i really like about swiss chard is we use this a lot in rice dishes not too long ago i made a tiki masala with some rice and i did a bunch of swiss chard with it and it just tasted so much better having the swiss there so i definitely would recommend trying this with your rice dishes okay so i'm harvesting a little bit slower than i normally would just because this is a new knife right now and it's very, very sharp. And I know that Swiss is really easy to harvest, so I just don't wanna end up cutting myself. Okay. Oh, this is looking beautiful. Swiss char is also super duper light. This is one of those crops I'm so glad that I finally figured out how to grow it. Because I remember when we first started growing it, I was really excited because I was like, oh, so this chart looks so beautiful. But then we tried a few times and I just couldn't seem to get the seed holes off. And I found that to be really frustrating because I wanted to grow this crop. It was just so pretty to me. So now that I finally figured out how to grow this, I've been so happy and it's definitely become one of my favorite crops to grow. And now it's a lot less challenging than it was at the beginning. So hopefully you guys have an easy time with it as well. So like right here, there's one seed hole. I'm just gonna pull that out. And that way later, it doesn't send me to the dentist. <laughs> okay, so now I have finished harvesting and we got 148 grams. And we got a nice full bowl right here. And this crop looks absolutely perfect. I'm extremely happy with it. So I'm gonna have CJ get me a bag together. And what we like to do is we like to put our end product into a bag and we always label it with the name and the date on it. So that way we don't have any mix ups and we know how fresh our product is in the end. So CJ, if you can give me a bag, please. Thank you, CJ. So now that we have our bag labeled, let me get this open and let's bag it up. So I want to carefully do this. Okay, let's get a few more of these. And the rest of that, I usually just take it and put it onto our tray. So what I'll be doing with these is I'm going to put them into our fridge and that way they can stay nice and fresh and I can use them throughout this week. Um, and I wanna go over real quick two different things. So we have had a lot of questions about what do we do with the grow medium after we are done with it. So what we like to do is we will actually, I don't know if it'll pull up, but we will pull all this out of the tray and we will toss it out into our compost pile and then later on, once it has composted, we will end up using that in our outdoor garden. We never bring the medium back into our grow space for microgreens just because you can cause potential pathogens and we just don't want to do that here. So we just reuse this in other ways outside of our grow space. And another thing I wanna go over is soon, I'm gonna be doing another walkthrough to grow these beautiful things you see right here. They look very similar to Swiss chard but this is actually the Detroit mix of the beets. And all these varieties have such beautiful colors, so I'm really excited to share that one with you guys as well soon. Oh, I almost forgot one thing. We forgot to taste test this. So I've been patiently waiting for the Swiss chard to be ready. So let's do a little bit of a taste. Let me give some to CJ. Mmm. I love Swiss chard. So it tastes kind of like a mixture between beets and uh, just like a leafy green all in one. It's so good. And I think that's why I love it so much because it makes it very versatile to use in so many different dishes. So very excited about that. So I had an awesome time growing the Swiss chard ruby red variety with you guys. 
There's many of other Swiss chard varieties that we have yet to try in our space, and we will be doing that soon, hopefully, CJ. <laughs> but I'm excited to share this one with you, and it was so much fun growing with this. And the main challenge here was getting seed holes off of this, and I think we did a fantastic job with this, and I hope that you guys do as well. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you dislike it, give it a thumbs down. If you have any questions or comments, please leave it in the section below. And also if you'd like to subscribe to us, it's somewhere over here. And our Facebook and Instagram are both at On The Grow Farms. Plus we also have our website up and running now, which is www.onthegrow.net. Thank you so much and have a great day.